Hi everyone, Knoopsy here. When I used the Xiaomi Mi 11 as my daily device for around a week, I was both surprised and also impressed. The design, build, performance, software, cameras, and features on features on features, it is truly an impressive device. Then the Mi 11 Ultra dropped, building on the Mi 11 even more. But is the Mi 11 Ultra worth the extra price? Are the extra features any good? And is this huge camera bump actually justified? Well, this is my full review. Today's video is sponsored by Brilliant. So, the Mi 11 Ultra is very similar to the Mi 11 in many areas, but there are some notable differences. First and foremost, the Ultra has a ceramic back versus glass on the Mi 11. Now, ceramic is not a completely new material for phones, some devices have done it in the past, but this phone, it feels incredible. It feels a lot like glass, but has an added touch of premium quality. It looks and feels amazing. Combined with those metal rails, the phone feels like the definition of luxury. The top has what looks like a small glass or clear plastic panel, with an IR blaster for controlling most TVs, and top and bottom firing speakers, which actually sound pretty nice. They get loud, the placement is unique, it's smart, and they just sound great. There's of course no headphone jack or expandable storage though. One thing to note though, this phone is heavy and it's also pretty thick as well. It's one of the heaviest phones I've used in a minute. That alone for some people might actually be a deal breaker. You definitely have to get used to the sheer mass of this device. Now personally, I don't really mind it, but for a lot of people this might be just too much phone to handle. Also at the back, there's that huge camera module, which doesn't really bother me so much either, from a usage perspective, or really even a design perspective. I also think it looks kinda cool. The size and design of this camera bump is most likely first to grab attention in an otherwise pretty normal smartphone market where everything kinda looks the same. Second, it's most likely for the camera tech, and third, this small display actually on the back. The display itself is small, not too sharp, but it's usable to show you the time, date, photos, and other personal touches and stays on for a maximum of 30 seconds. It's pretty cool, I'm not gonna lie, but it's not the most useful of features. The most useful thing you can actually do with this display is use it as a viewfinder for the rear camera setup for photos. So instead of taking selfies with the front facing camera, you can actually use the rear camera to position and frame your shots. Up front, there's an in-display fingerprint scanner which kind of has been a bit unreliable for me and a little bit slow. For some reason, it just doesn't seem to work consistently, but maybe a softer update will fix it. But when the display's powered on, it's a beautiful 6.8 inch OLED 120Hz 2K resolution display. And just like the Mi 11, it's an awesome panel. It gets bright, colors are beautiful, and the 120Hz refresh rate is definitely a treat. And combine that fast display with the Snapdragon 888 processor and up to 12 gigs of RAM, which I have in my unit, the combination of that display, killer specifications, and MIUI with its animations and optimizations hits an awesome, smooth experience. That was a lot of words, but basically no matter what you do with this phone on a daily basis, it's gonna feel incredibly fast. Whether it's multitasking, swiping around, playing games, opening closing apps, this phone can handle it all. It's a flagship phone, it has insane specifications. You're gonna have no problem here with speed, I can guarantee you that. It's basically the same internals as the Mi 11, and that was one of the fastest phones I've used all year so far, so it's the same thing here, just with more RAM. Let's talk about the software, MIUI 12. I went super in depth in the software on my Mi 11 review, so I won't be going into as much detail in this video, but here's an abridged version. Xiaomi has done wonderful things with their software experience. The software on the surface is clean, it's smooth, the animations are thoughtful and kinda beautiful. Icons are certainly their own style too, and they're also animated in some ways as well. The user interface is all the familiar things you expect with Android, including Google Apps, Google Keyboard, some really good Xiaomi apps, all those normal things. But when you dive in, there are many, many, many features. From customization to usage enhancements, power saving modes, and even just little user interface treats, Xiaomi has really grown and made a version of Android that, while definitely heavier than things like the Pixel Launcher or Oxygen OS, it still feels clean, minimal, smooth, but just packed with tons of features. Honestly, it's one of my new favorite versions of Android, and I like things pretty minimal. 
Okay, let's talk cameras. So the front selfie camera is 20 megapixels and is actually pretty good, but I did tend to use that second display and the rear cameras to take selfies because they just look much better in most situations, not gonna lie. Like, look at this photo. Then look at this photo. It's almost worth the few extra seconds of powering on that second display and flipping the phone around because of dynamic range, depth of field, colors, sharpness, it's just on a different level than the front facing camera. The front facing camera also shoots 1080p videos up to 60 frames per second and you're hearing the microphone quality right now. Now, the rear camera setup is also quite interesting beyond just the crazy design of this module. Instead of 108 megapixels on the Mi 11, it's 50 megapixels for the main camera on this device, as well as 48 megapixels for the up to 5 times optical zoom, 120 times digital zoom periscope telephoto camera, that's a lot of numbers, as well as a 48 megapixel, 128 degree field of view ultra wide camera, and that's pretty wide. Photos with the main camera are pretty nice. There's accurate shots for the most part, shots are sharp, dynamic range is on point, depth of field is damn good. It almost eliminates the need to even use portrait mode on this device. Like, look at this photo. The background blur is natural, it's gorgeous, it looks amazing. The ultra wide camera with very similar colors and processing to the main camera is also very nice. It doesn't handle dynamic range as well as the main shooter does, but shots look impressive. Lots of detail, minimal to no edge distortion, it's bright, it has autofocus which some ultra wide cameras don't have. I think it's a great ultra wide camera experience. A telephoto camera wasn't even present on the standard Mi 11, but they saved all of that telephoto goodness for the ultra device. There's up to 5 times optical zoom, and you're still getting some banger photos even zoomed in that far. Digital zoom at 10 times zoom is nice, but anything more, it starts to become a little bit of a gimmick. Like, 120 times digital zoom is a nice specification number to have, but the shots are not that good. Now photos at night are also great. With the phone's large sensors and some optimizations, photos are solid. Video recording on this phone up to 8K is also impressive as well. These samples are all shot in 4K 30 frames per second, and Xiaomi's phones have honestly surprised me quite a bit with their solid video recording capabilities. Dynamic range and colors are nice, stabilization is on point and looks natural, and next to Samsung devices, this is one of my favorite video recording experiences on any Android phone. Now for battery life, this phone has a 5000 mAh cell inside, and it definitely does provide a solid day of usage or more. I've been testing this thing pretty intensively, watching videos on the beautiful display, using social apps, emails, testing the cameras, the usual day to day. Now using the cameras and that second display, those are things that will drain your battery more, no doubt, and I have seen that from my usage. If you're really concerned about battery life, there are some pretty solid power saving modes and also just turn off that second display if you don't really want it. You can definitely get through a full day, maybe a bit of a second day as well if you conserve your battery a bit. And when it comes time to actually charge the phone, it's quite impressive. 67 watt wired charging and 67 watt wireless charging as well. That's under 40 minutes from 0 to 100% with Xiaomi's charging cube or their wireless charger. There's also 10 watt reverse wireless charging. You have 5000 milliamp hours, why not share it? So that's the Xiaomi Mi 11 Ultra, a device that builds even more on the already feature packed Mi 11. The Mi 11 Ultra has everything an Ultra flagship phone in 2021 has. Now, those extra features we talked about throughout this video are nice, but I still think the Mi 11 is the sweet spot between both these two phones. 
The Mi 11 has like 90% of the things the Ultra has, but it's in a much better package in my opinion. It's thinner, it's lighter, it's nicer to hold, the cameras are still great, the displays are great, it's just as fast. The Mi 11 is just the better bet. But I'd be lying if I didn't say the Mi 11 Ultra is a lot of fun, because it is. It's also nice holding a phone that feels this premium and solid on a daily basis. The design is definitely beautiful, the cameras are great, it's one of Xiaomi's best devices they've ever put together. If you really want to spend the cash, you like the features, you like the design, you're going to like this phone quite a bit. Now let's talk about today's sponsor, Brilliant. Brilliant is a website and app that has a range of amazing classes about math, science, and computer science, with interactive courses about finance, statistics, physics, cryptocurrency, programming, and so much more. And while these all sound like big, complex concepts, Brilliant helps to actually simplify these ideas with fun problem solving, beautiful graphics, and engaging lessons, so you can learn, have fun, and use these newfound skills to build and navigate the future. Quantum Computing is one of their big courses, and they actually collaborated with Microsoft and Alphabet X for these lessons. The course breaks down the complex concepts of quantum computing and helps you to generally understand what it really is and what it isn't. You even get to build your own quantum algorithms within the course, with a simulated quantum computer. Head over to www.brilliant.org slash to sign up for free, and the first 200 people will get 20% off their annual membership. Thanks to Brilliant for sponsoring this video. So what do you think of the Xiaomi Mi 11 Ultra? Are those extra features worth the extra price? Do you like the design? Do you like this camera module? Let me know in the comments down below. I'm looking forward to reading your thoughts. Like the video if you liked it, subscribe, and thank you for watching.